Um, and if you look at the five-year plan for Tasmania here, you can see it's very ambitious in terms of saying that the government not only will be building this infrastructure, but will be a first customer by, re, by modernizing the government services to the digital world, being able so that most of what you have to go and stand in line in a queue to get your driver's license redone or, or get your benefits, that will all go to being online and uh, hopefully make your government more efficient and, and presumably cost less. Um, for the same aspect. And then there's this, I think, rather visionary idea that you're going to try, because you're putting the fiber to 90% of the homes and in Australia, and high-speed wireless to the others, your attempt is to make the rural life just as communications rich as the urban life. And therefore, in a place like Tasmania, which has such wonderful environment that you've worked so hard to maintain, a lot of people are attracted to that if they could actually get on with business, which more and more means in telecommunication. And so uh, if you look at the ideas of an aging population, I can tell you elder care is the killer app. The ability to have uh, video cameras and motion sensors and so forth in your home to help take care of aging uh, parents and, and grandparents. Um, Re helping with the efforts to redo the education, uh, the uh, smart grid, the restructuring of the utilities, uh, your all-important management of the water usage in the state so that you have more to make energy to export over the undersea cable to Australia, uh, and so forth. So this is all very uh, exciting, but the thing that makes it particularly good for Australia is you're, you're, you've got this momentum, but you're not actually the first country to put fiber into the homes. And so Japan, we work very closely with NTT, uh, their big telecommunication uh, company. And these are the graphs. It's in Japanese, so I won't, um, don't try to read it. But the main thing is that's December of 2000 on the one side and March of this year. So that's nine years, roughly eight years. And what you can see is the bright green line that goes up and comes down is the copper-based DSL into the home. That's what the telephone company would normally put into your home for uh, internet access. Now, unlike the megabit per second that you have in Australia, in, in Japan, they had 40 megabits per second. Wouldn't, that, you, wouldn't you think you'd be pretty happy, right, if you had 40 times the bandwidth you have now? Notice they're turning off that service and instead going to the orange that's going up, which is the fiber to the home. For, so for the Japanese, 40 megabits a second is not enough bandwidth. They're turning that in to get their 100 megabit, which is what Australia is going to put in 90% of all the buildings in this country. You will have more penetration of larger percentage of your population with this gold standard, the new age of glass as the age of copper comes to an end than any other country in the world. But you won't have the most homes. This shows you that by just another uh, four years, 2013, there will be 130 million households with fiber to the home. Now, there are only 8 million households in all of Australia. So between now and 2013 is your window to take this nation-building platform for innovation and make use of it, to create the companies, the entrepreneurial companies that will make the new services that you can sell into the 130 million homes because you have the ubiquity to be attractive to entrepreneurs who are going to create the services to go over the open platform that the NBN will be. Notice Asia is the leading part of the world with this new technology. Europe and the United States are not the leads. Boy, can I tell you the United States is not the lead on this. I mean, it's a complete, it's impossible to imagine the United States doing something as bold as the NBN. It will never happen. The entrenched interests are just too great. And so we, I 
as someone who spent a lot of their life on this, I love Australia. I think it's just go for it, you know. I can't, I, it's just, that's why I keep coming back. I mean, I can't talk about this stuff with any practicality in the United States, okay. The growth is 30% per year. Would you like to be in a company that uh, has 30% growth prospects of customers year after year after year projected into the future? And furthermore, if that's 2013, think what, what Australia's position in the world would be competitively if you hadn't already started the NBN in 2009. I mean, you, were just, you would just be a poverty-stricken backwater in cyberspace, which is where all the economy is of the world. So you're very fortunate that you had a government visionary enough to move forward. Now, the one company we have in the United States in telecom that is doing what you're doing is Verizon. And they started several years back going in, putting in fiber to the home, and cutting the copper behind them, burning the boats. <laughs> There's no going back for Verizon. They've, they've made sure there's no fallback position. Okay, one of the largest telecommunications companies in America. And you can see as a result, it's forced the entire company to think about the future and not just hold on to the past. And so they're beginning to understand throughout the home, multiple televisions, gaming, education, music, pictures, are all be integrated on this new platform. Well, how has it changed my life? I um, don't have 100 megabits per second to my home. On a good day with a strong wind behind my back, I can get up to maybe 10. Usually it's single digits, not so different than here. And yet, as I've begun to think about where we're going, I've really changed the way I do business. Now, I'm a professor, okay? I'm in the nonprofit area by design rather than by consequence as many of your companies are now. I have two buildings, about $100 million of ultra-modern facilities with about 1,000 people engaged across uh, 24 different departments of two different universities. 200 <clears throat> companies uh, work, have worked with us, about 300 federal grants, several hundred faculty. This is how I run things from my home. I'm using video Skype to my division director <clears throat> 100 kilometers to the north in a different city, Irvine. We're having a discussion over uh, video Skype. I can also go uh, link into any commercial video conferencing system from my laptop over the internet. So here, on the left of my computer screen, I've got uh, my UCSD, U U University of California, San Diego, directors and chief of staff. The other one up at Irvine. So these are, I'm at home. They're like a um, half an hour drive into the campus. The Irvine is an hour and a half drive. And we, you know, it's just click, click, click. And, um, and by the way, it's, it's free. It's 100 bucks to buy the software, and after that, the use is free. This is my assistant, Kristen, of six years. Uh, she's incredibly good at what she does, uh, which is very intense she, uh, all day long. Uh, she gets all my mail, sets all my appointments, all this sort of stuff. And her husband got an opportunity uh, up north in California, and she came in in tears and said, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I don't want to lose my job. Uh, I love working with you and so forth. And I said, well, I'm on the road all the time anyway. How would I know that you're 300 miles to the north instead of me? 